voice in your ears. These are your teachers. This is Pro Football Sweden, presented by Rare Athletics. This is our first season. All football in Sweden. Feel free to comment and send messages about how we're doing. We enjoy the engagement we've had so far. Today, I'm joined by my co host, Chalo Juice and Antoine Allen. What's going on, fellas? What's going on? What's up? <laughs> well, it's good to get back to the show. We're doing this weekly. Uh, what is this? Episode 14? Woo! Yeah, episode 14, one four. We've been, we've been out here for a couple of months. Uh, thanks to our partners at American Football in Finland, Improved Athletes, and Pro Football Sweden. The PFS podcast is available everywhere you listen to your podcasts, and you can see us visually here on YouTube. Wherever you listen or watch, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe. Now let's get into some football. All right, first quarter here on the PFS pod. Let's talk energy from last week's one game. What was positive? What was negative? Uh, Juice, lead us off, man. What did you have? What do you think about this this one game? Hey, before I get into this, I got to say happy birthday to my bro, S1. Double A. Thanks, bro. Oh, happy birthday, man. I didn't yeah. even know. It was, it was yesterday, but, yeah, we out here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when, when I was watching this game, the only game of the week, I was thinking, man, Coach Mo, I want to feel bad for you. I really do. He's always with these the underdog type of team situations, and they're doing basic things, and they got some potential to make some plays, and they stayed in the games. Like I tried to look, I wanted to look up to see if they ever got just flat out blown out by any teams all season. Probably, probably one game, but like they actually making somewhat type of fight to be in some of the games, but they just can't get it done. So I, I would say that's my negative. But then again, I just can't really feel bad because I, I just want him to be in a better environment. You know, he can choose to be in a better environment. There's other teams that start going. But then again, you don't know the culture over there. You know, positives that I would say is that when you're watching a game and the scores are quite close, it almost can seem boring. But then, you know, it's like a, a decent football game. It's a it's a match. So mm -hmm. I would say that's the positive that I've seen from this past game. What about you, Antoine? Negative uh, Nah, the one positive I have is that uh, Utterbrew was able to secure uh, their playoff spot. Uh, so they'll be waiting for more than likely uh, Oslo in the first round of the playoffs. So congratulations on that. And then uh, they see surpassed 5,000 yards uh, in his career in um, the Super Series. So congrats on that as well. But yeah, as for negatives, like, I don't know. They, they just didn't look the way that I was expecting them to kind of come out here and look. AIK did exactly what I thought they were going to do. So there's no negative for me on, on, on their standpoint. They actually looked like they were actually moving the ball, but the only thing is that they couldn't put points up on the board. Um, but that's been their issue all year, so that's not really a negative for me anymore. But, yeah, Utter Blue just didn't look as dominant as I would have liked them to look. So now I feel like in their first playoff game that uh, coming up in a couple of weeks, I feel like Oslo has a really good chance um, to go out there and win because they've been looking better uh, at the end of the season than Utter Blue has. Uh, for me, uh, I'll start with negative and end with a positive. Negative, I re I actually, I don't feel like it was negative. I, I think the game was okay. Uh, the stream was actually okay. Not bad. I could kind of see the numbers of the jerseys. So I'm just going to say a positive. I like AIK white jerseys, man. I don't know why they wore the white jerseys, but I like them. And they look good out there. And I know the week before, I think they wore black jerseys and it was hot. So, you know, maybe it was hot again. They decided to wear the white. But I do have a question. Have we seen OBK wear the white jerseys? I was wondering maybe that's why they did it. I really don't think Earl Blue liked wearing white jerseys. I think that's all. probably what it is. Like, even when I remember some games we played against them when I played, they wanted to wear black all the time. As if, all the like, time. Maybe, maybe they don't have enough white jerseys or something. I have no idea. But that could be the case. They don't want to buy no yeah. white jerseys. It could be cheap. But, again, the positive is AIK white jerseys, them things look good. I, I love to see a team wear white on white, man. It just it looks good. So, and, and another positive would be that there was only one game. I'm not going to lie to you guys. 
kind of stretching this thing out. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, we kind of knew, you know, yeah. where we was going to end up. I'm trying to get it's there. It's a weekend for most games for me either. I'm glad it was one. Woke up early this morning, watched it. Yeah. And yeah. Again, uh, you know, Alpha has to play games. Antoine, you got to play games. I got to watch games. Y'all know I'm watching games in a whole nother <laughs> league. So – not not having to watch a whole lot of these games. My weekends are, are basically been me going to a game, going home from the game, watching another game on the way home, and then waking up and watching another game in the morning, and then going to watch another game live. And oof. this weekend I was able to go to the summer house, you know, hang out for a little bit. Then I went to Corvu. I ain't gonna talk about what happened to Alpha and them out there, but y'all know how that goes. It's almost becoming a weekly thing. A slight dig to the pause, 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 pause. pause. Well, not, I don't think it's a pause situation. <laughs> We're not going there. No, it wasn't like a pause, no gay situation, homo. It was like a pause, like, hey, we're not doing this right now. We got to keep it natural, though. Let's give us the week six. Give us to the midpoint of the season. Oh, you don't want to listen to the episodes that are coming out. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't wait. We can't wait. It's already been done. But, again, back to, to Sweden. Uh, guys, like, this one game was – I think it was a good break, too, for everybody else. Yeah. So, like like I said, like, we the season has kind of been going, and everyone else kind of got this break, and now we got, you know, playoff – implication weekend and then we're into the playoffs so the next three four weeks full gas it's gonna be exciting very exciting so mm -hmm. with that i think we can move on all right we're moving into the second quarter Top Performers is presented by Rare Athletics Apparel and Accessories, made for players by players. More than just accessories, Rare provides custom jerseys for teams all over Europe. So head over to the web shop at rare.se and upgrade your drip today. Now let's name a couple of guys who stood out from last week's game. Antoine, I'll let you start it off. Oh uh, yeah, I have two. I just have a uh, Jasper Lindeus, uh, you know, five receptions under 25 yards and a touchdown. Uh, good job on that. And then I have uh, on the defensive side uh, from AIK, uh, Leander uh, Moravka. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. But he, he was able to um, have an impact on the defensive side of the ball. He had two picks in this game. So anytime you can get two picks that, in the game. Is that number 27? Is that who that yeah. was? Yeah, it's yeah, number 27. His stats are not going to jump out at you on Wally, but he's typically a very sound uh, DB and very, very effective on that side of the ball. Like, he, he don't get bullied around too much like the other DBs do. So. I had the same same folks. I noticed the, the two picks. Um, I thought, you know what, one of them was lucky. But then again, <laughs> he caught the ball, and, and it came to him. He, you know, not everybody's catching the ball, as you see, Bally Core. Yeah. And, you know, uh, young Linnaeus, he did his thing. Um, also, I mean – you know, I was going to say Vasey, you know, a lot because he did work. You know, he made plays. He had one hell of a play where he went back almost 30 yards through it. You know, it's like, man, he's consistent. Mm. Consistent yeah. doing this, you know. And backyard football, it seems to be like his thing. Um, Dude's got a, a hell of an arm, though. Like, you have to admit, like, watching him throw yeah. some of these passes. Like, like you said, on that back foot, he was in the middle of the field going backwards, throws it to the bottom of the numbers. And they caught the ball. The camera was a little late, but I knew they were going to catch it. But he, he caught the ball, and I'm just looking at, like, first of all, why he throw that? Like, I thought he was trying to throw it out of bounds at one point because I think that was a play where he, like, ran back two or three times, which Antoine yeah. doesn't like that, but he does it because he can. Because he, cause he goddamn can. I know, He's I know. But, like, for me, it's just, like, I've seen moments this season where doing that has cost you 15 mm -hmm. to 20 yards. So – to do it every game, I'm just like it's the Brett Favre in him, man. It's that it, gunslinger. It, it makes me. I don't like it because I know that he can run. Mm, and, yeah. he, and his speed, will, I know that he can get yards if he runs forward. So it's just like just just scramble. That's just what I want to see. It's that, it's that Josh Allen in him. Let me say I, something I, more more relative to the kids nowadays. It's that Josh Allen in him. Josh Allen would do some some crazy stuff. Then he make a throw, and you'd be like, well, you know, he's that guy. That's Trevor Macy. Yeah. It's like. Some stuff is, is risque, man, but you know, he's that guy. So you, yeah. you can you can live with it. I think yeah. OBK is okay with living it with it. Hey, I forget to mention 
on, on one of those interceptions, didn't y'all think that they got robbed on a free play? Y'all, y'all didn't pick that? It was like two dudes jumped all sides on I core and he threw the ball. And that's why I was like, yo, he got lucky. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, hold up, hold up, hold up. Like, that should have been like all sides. It was two folks jumped all sides. <laughs> yeah. My bad, yeah. you know. I, I'm, I'm allowed to say that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but but last thing I put in my notes though, I wanted to think, you know, man, Trevor Macy got to be in shape, bro. I don't know what type of condition he's doing, but he's running a lot. Or I, I, think, I, I, I think he does CrossFit. Oh, think, the season, he won't be able to do this. I think if anyone has ever seen Alpha Jallo play, him saying that about someone else is a hell of a compliment. Just so you know. Cause I know how it is sometimes, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you say someone that got to be in shape to do something, I mean, damn, they must really got to be in shape because I've yeah. seen you and what you do on the field. So if you think someone else is, you know, to that type of level, that's a hell of a compliment. I'm just saying, like, y'all need to understand there's some value behind what that man just said right there. A lot I mean, of value behind man, that. Man, man, basically, you're going to have to link up on a baller's retreat. You know what I mean? Put us, put us on work, grind, chill. Do some video. Other. Have uh, Trevor Vasey beat Alpha Jallo in the forty? Nah, he not, no, he ain't gonna beat me in that one. <laughs> we're conditioning test, but we can make up though. We can make up. Me and Vasey can make up. But yeah, that that any given thing. Sunday type thing. Jamie Fox and uh, LL Cool J and they was running the forty. Yeah, just, just go. I mean, he could he could pull a you know ready set and then he jump off and then go. He might beat you. Yeah, he got long legs. He might. Yeah. you know, it's gonna take me some time to catch forty yards. Quite sure. Yeah, don't give but him five or ten. He might win. I think. I think I got him though. You ain't do yours. Uh, we're we're good now. Okay, we're good yeah, now. It's my turn. Thank you guys. Yeah, you got it. You've had permission. <laughs> uh, so the guy that stood out to me this week was uh, number two, Luke Lambert. Is is that Max's? Are they brothers? I don't know. I don't know the the family situations out there in Sweden. Is that is that the quarterback's brother, Luke Lambert, number two? Because I got the same last name. I mean, but, but a lot, a lot of people in Sweden got the same last name. Ah, true. They might, they might not even be related at all. Yeah. Hold on, yeah, hold on. I'm looking at his face. Nah, they're brothers. They're brothers. Ah, they're brothers. Yeah. Ah, they look like twins. Yeah, they look they, like twins. Hey, hey, but I forgot to throw Murphy in there too. Murphy, Eric Murphy. <laughs> My bad. Go ahead, we Gucci. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. No more. Murphy no was more. good though. Murphy played. I mean, let's talk about it a little bit. Murphy played all hey, the time in this game, and, and he smoothed with that blitz. He came off the game and smacked Lambert. I was like, sheesh. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that boy, that's man. that's an interesting thing. Hey, I don't think we're gonna, I don't think we talked about much of the game, actual game. But uh, OBK did a lot of secondary blitzes. They had a lot of outside linebackers, nickelbackers, and cornerback blitzes all game. They just kept sending them, just kept sending them off the edge. Like they sent a lot of pressure to AIK. AIK offense actually held up pretty well against that pressure, except for a few times, like what you said when Eric Murphy went out there and. Smack the guy, and, but very good on them to mix up their defensive calls and kind of use the secondary in, in the pass rush instead of using their linebackers. And when it was able to force plays to go outside, force the receivers to make plays, which again, they didn't make as many as you like. But the guy I liked was Luke Lambert, number two. Uh, he almost had a touchdown in the long run, but before then, and even after that. He was the go-to target for them in this game. I'm going to look at his stats real quick. He had six receptions for 92 yards. I just saw him making a lot of catches, um, kind of being the the safety net for the quarterback when he was looking for somebody. He usually was looking for number two. He showed pretty, pretty consistent hands compared to everyone else, caught some good passes, helped them move the ball throughout the game, uh, just really good outing by him. So he was impressive to me, key performer for sure. I think yeah, man, we'll, if you, as a quarterback, if you're going to trust anybody, you might as well trust your brother. That makes sense. You <laughs> trust your brother if you don't trust anybody. Uh, yeah. So I guess we'll, we'll get into talking a little bit about the playoffs now. All right, halftime. Playoff talk. Super Saiyan is one week for playoffs. So let's look at the playoff picture and discuss the possibilities. I'm going to run through, like, the standings right now, and then we kind of talk about what interests us going down the stretch. So first place, you got Carl Stafford Senators. They're 7-0, guaranteed the number one seed. They got to buy. Second place currently is Tiraso Royal Crowns, 
who are five and one. They take they right now have the number two seed and the bye. Third place, Stockholm Mean Machines, they're five and one. They have the number three seed and a home game for the quarterfinals. Number four seed, Orbro Black Knights, who are three and four. They're home for the qualifier currently, and they're locked in as well. All four all four of these teams are locked into the playoffs. So we only have two spots available. So now we go to fifth place, Oslo Vikings, two and four. Sixth place, AIK, one and five. Seventh place, K-Town Predators, one and five. Eighth place, Limham Griffins, one and five. What do y'all want to talk about first? I mean, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on. So at the top of the table uh, in this week's upcoming game, we have Stockholm versus Tier So. And mm-hmm. now every the top of the table has something to fight for and the bottom of the table has something to fight for. So mm-hmm. uh, AIK and Stockholm, they're fighting for that second. They're fi- fighting for that second seed in that first week by in the playoffs. And then whoever loses this game will have the third seed, and then they will have to play a qualifying game. Oh, no, you mean Tiraso and Stockholm, right? Yeah, yeah, Tiraso and Stockholm. Just make sure. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. that, so that's interesting right there. And then at the bottom, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on. Let, before right. we go to the bottom, let's talk about the top. I got a question because you guys know a little bit more than I know about like how the mm-hmm. Super Series works. So, Tiraso is playing Stockholm. Mm-hmm. They're both five and one. Oh, yeah. so it doesn't matter, like point wise, yeah. because one of them will be one five will or be. two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody, yeah. So the winner is going to get exactly. the second seed. That yeah. makes it simple. So then, if we go down to the bottom games, what does that look like to you? So we yeah. have we have Oslo versus AIK. So mm-hmm. AIK can lose their playoff spot, and then well, AIK. Hold on, but the- will they? Yes. They will. I go look at first one? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah if they so they got to win to be in the playoffs, or they lose yeah. it. Yeah. Because if they win, if they win, they're in. Yeah, they have to win to get into the playoffs. How do they automatically get in if they win? Because they But the other question is, the other two teams play against each other as well, and somebody can advantage yeah. over them if they win. That's my last yeah. question. Yeah, that's my thing. If I go does think. win, yeah, go ahead. Could Lim could uh could Konstad or Limham still have a chance to get in if AIK wins? Okay, so Next. if if, if AIK right. wins, if AIK wins, then they're in the playoffs. But if if Limham wins, then they're in the playoffs for sure because AIK beat Limham. So AIK but is that, that tiebreaker? Say the Predators win because that's the team that AIK beat, right? No, sorry, AIK beat the Predators. Yeah, they beat the. Oh, they, no, they beat, beat, they beat, they beat them. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so say the Predators win, mm-hmm. and I go wins. You know, the Predators. Uh, yeah, the Predators. Pred- yeah, Predators. Predators head to head over I Yeah. The, okay, so that was my question. Is it a head to head thing? Yeah, yeah. It turns it turns into a head to head thing if if because I I assumed that it was going to be point differential. Yeah, because because they have it seeded off by point difference, except for Aikor, because Aikor has minus thirty three, which should have Hukonstad ahead of them. Honestly, no, no, no. Minus thirty three is better than minus one thirty. No, my, minus minus thirty three is Oslo. Uh, Aik has yeah. minus one eighteen or uh, one thirteen. Yeah, it's in order by point differential right now. It has Aik. K Town Limham because it's one negative one thirteen negative one thirty. Oh, 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 oh yeah, 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 yeah. It is one thirteen. So I was, I, looking at the, I was looking at the typo that's up over here. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think they will turn different differential. I think they will turn to the head to the head to head match. On my on my notes, I have a typo. I got one thirty three on my notes. Ah, that's me. It's one thirty three, and it should be one thirteen. You're right. That is a typo. I put that too. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, but I, I do think it. I think it goes to uh, to the head to head matchup versus the point differential. It seems like the league is going by uh, by point difference. It seems like that's how the league going by. Yeah, that would be that so, would be crazy because if I'm the Predators and I beat Limham this weekend and AIK wins and they still get the playoffs, I'm like, bro, we beat them. Yeah, you're gonna complain, but again, it's, it's your full season of work, not one game to determine playoffs. I get that's can, what we tell that? can we see how crazy this looks? AIK only put up 56 points for the year. It's all about how many points you give up. That's the thing about point differential. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, you just don't true. need to get beat too bad, and then you can make it even. So 
it let me talk about if it was by point differential, which apparently we don't know if it's point differential or by head to head. So someone who does know, leave a comment, let us know. So then we can yeah. have that correct going into the playoffs. But so technically, if if AIK mm. were to to win their game, yeah, they would be two and five. Oslo would be two and five, and then either Limham or the Predators would be two and five. So you'd have three teams at two and five. Oslo yeah. is going to be guaranteed an end guaranteed. because yeah. their point differential, unless they get beat by 100 points in the game, <laughs> their point differential is going to make sure that they're the number five seed. Yeah. So, again, then it becomes a point differential between these three teams. Well, then AIK. These, yeah, as long as AIK doesn't get beat by 20-plus points yeah. and – one of the other team wins by 20 plus points, they should be in if they win, right? Like that makes it simple. Yeah. So let's say, I mean, let's say the Predators win and they shut out Limham and then AIK wins, but they give but they give up 30 points. Yeah. They lose by 30. Then or no, they can win. Let's say they just well no, no yeah, that one. Yeah, they, if they lost by 30, then yeah. Or, I mean, if, or they, if they or if they barely win, if they yeah. barely win, their point differential doesn't change. Yeah. And the Predators win by more than what's the difference? Yeah. Yeah. 17. Yeah, 17 is the difference. So the, yeah. the Predators need to win by more than 17 yep. and let AIK win by like plus one. Yeah. Then they can get into the playoffs over. That'll be that'll be crazy. And that's similar that. to that's similar situation for the Griffins. So but <laughs> This week is going to be crazy. Like this is the week of storylines for real. Yeah. And but let's be realistic. Play. Let's be realistic. Also, if Oslo wins, <laughs> first of all, because that's probably more likely to happen. <laughs> if Oslo wins, they're three and four, and they, depending on how much they win by, they could become the three seed. They win by thirty. No, 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 they, they, no, 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 they won't become the three seed. They'll become the four seed. They can, they can knock the blue down. Again. Yeah, that's what I meant. The four seed, the four seed. Yeah. Sorry, they would go yeah. up one seed and become. A, they'd at least be able to get a home game. Yeah, if true. they beat, if they beat AIK by thirty plus points, which gives them incentive to beat the crap out of them, yeah. not just win. I'm gonna say this in the hypothetical world: like, if Azo moves up into fourth place i'm i'm picking them to beat other people in the playoffs anyway but if they move mm. up to fourth place guaranteed there ain't no way that this is their first year in the super series and they get they make it to the playoffs and they have a home field advantage ain't no way they're losing that game ain't no yeah. way ain't no way but, so if oslo say oslo wins the game three and four mm. then then that means whoever wins out of limham and predators gets in yeah, but it's like we, it's like I said last week. They get in, but like, yeah, congratulations, you made the playoffs, but you're going to get Stockholm or TSL. Oh, so they're going to get, you know, yeah, they're going to get. Up. But again, <laughs> on their record, they're going to be able to say they made the playoffs. True. And for some reason, that goes a long way. I just throw it out a random antidote. You don't know how many times I've had coaches come up to me or send me a message, ask me about a team. I say, well, you know, this team said they made the playoffs last year, so are they any good? And I'm like, yeah, they made the playoffs. They came in third place out of four teams. And this is a team, I mean, if you come in sixth place out of eight, yeah, you made the playoffs. But Yeah. Yeah, it do need to be a bit more of a challenge, you know, to get in the playoffs. That's why it's going to be good if they add more teams. But at the end of the day, you know, you get in, you know, when you get into the playoffs, it's, it's everything starts over. Everybody's zero and zero. I remember in 2018 when Stockholm, um, no, uh, Karlstad was favored to win, and Stockholm turned the table after that. You know, they got in. Stockholm wasn't the best team in 2018, and boom, won the championship. Matt Fresloff took off, and the week before the the finals. Um, Coach Mo brought Uppsala up there to to Karlstad and almost beat and almost beat them. So then you got to evaluate how they finish the season. How but also, you got to realize those situations where there's four teams playing compared to where there's six. Like we got to be a little bit more realistic about that too. Is you're gonna have a team that 
we're we're saying right now for sure somebody's gonna be in the playoffs and have only won two out of six games for sure, mm-hmm. and that team is most likely gonna play a team that has won five out of seven. Yeah, compared to two out of seven, like yeah. no no matter who they play, they're gonna play a team that's won five or they've won two, and that's just a huge gap compared to the four and five game where you're gonna have probably a team that probably two teams that both won yeah, three and four. four. Yeah, I mean, these different centers. It's not like they got in the playoffs and got a first round bye. I mean, they get. It's like you almost get picked till then. Yeah. yeah, that's how it goes. Like they're 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 trying to make sure that that sixth place team. Yeah, you get to pat yourself on the back and make, say you made playoffs, but they ain't trying to give you no chance to win. <laughs> they not. I mean, but any, but like anything could happen. But like in in reality, it's not no none of the teams none of the teams in the sixth seed have anything that I think, oh, they might be able to upset a Tito or or a Stockholm in a in the first round of the playoffs. None of them have enough. Before we move on, so let's just throw this this last question and I'll ask both of you guys is, you know, basically the way the way that the set standings are gonna go, mm-hmm. then last year's division one teams are gonna be the last three spots. And out of those three teams, one of them is going to get in the playoffs. That's just mm-hmm. the way it goes. We knew that going into the season. It went mm-hmm. out exactly like I said. I said they would be at the bottom. They're all at the bottom. But hypothetically, and if it was up to you guys, which one of these three teams would you want to be in that playoff and have the chance to create the upset? Which one would you want to see in that game more than any any of the other two? Is I got a- Is North Fleet healthy to play? Uh, I don't know. If he was there, I think Kukonstad should have the best chance. Yeah. But because then on paper, on paper, I right, cool look like it. So the ask is what we want. So it's off of what we want. Yeah, your personal opinion. Yeah. You know what I mean? Go ahead, Antoine. Let me let me go ahead and think about it after you <laughs> get some logical explanation. <laughs> if I'm looking at these three teams that uh are, that came up from Division One, if I look at them. There's only one of these three teams that ha- that can score points and that can somewhat slow a team down on defense. And that who is that? That's the Predators. Listen, they can put up more than seven points, and they're able to move the ball. Yeah, they're able. Listen, AIK can yes, they can move the ball, but I, it's like That's I said last week. Right. It's, I, 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 it's like I continue to say they're only good for seven points. They only average nine point three points a game. They every week from. Their blowout when they got shut out to now has been zero seven seven, and that and those points don't don't always come from the offensive side of the ball. True, and 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 then their points are coming in garbage time too, like in the fourth quarter. Like the game's already over by then, you're already down twenty one zero, and it's just garbage time. So now you just happen to score in garbage time. So it's just like, but um, yeah, we had high expectations for Limham, but their offense yeah. after that after that Odebu win, we were like, oh shit, like damn, like. This this team is good, and then they've just their train fell off the rails mm-hmm. and <laughs> never looked the same. So, yeah, if I if I got to look at who's more complete, it, it'll have to be the Predators at this point. Ooh. What about you, James? Yeah, yeah, thanks for that explanation because I was already thinking that. But then again, I was thinking, okay, Northley didn't play, but Jacob was it Jacob Stumberg? He played yeah. quarterback, and he's yeah. actually spreading the ball around, and I think that they can still do that. Because when I was looking at I call this past week, in the first quarter, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think they get every first drive, every drive in the first quarter was all three and outs. Yeah. All three and outs. And it was yeah. just like, bro, you can't win a game like this. Our keys to victory in college or offense was to make sure that we didn't get any three and outs on our first drive and try to score points. And defense, we want to make sure we get a three and out or minimum team did not score a field goal or anything against yeah. us. So, like, that first drive sets the tone for a lot. And they had the yeah. first quarter almost zero. So, I was like, to answer your question, I'm going to go with the Predators, too. That's who I would want to be there because I feel like they deserve it. I'm glad y'all convinced me because I'm also going to go with the Predators. because you, you make sense. You, I mean, you got to score. You have That's, to score. You're going to give up points. Everybody giving up points except for the Crusaders. Now, if AIK's defense was is what it is now, and then they and they could score points on the offensive side of the ball, then I'll but I'll, I'll feel yeah. more saying AIK. But 100%. the points got to be there, and the points is it is it too late for Alpha to go play for AIK for a couple of weeks? <laughs> like just go go over the boat, slide into somebody's jersey, and you know give them a little something. something. 
Yeah, you got, so they, you, got to, you got to sit out like you got to sit out like one week, you know. Yeah. But I would do some damage though. I I'd be looking forward for that tier so game. So I'll sub the DBs. You know, what I mean, because the, they got the best ones. So I want to go against them. They got the best. Uh, well, I I agree with you guys. I think we we're all in agreement that the Predators are the team that we would like to see in the playoffs. So that, that gives me hope. I guess we'll we'll get into these matchups now. It's week 10, baby. Super Serum teams are back in action this weekend. First game, Oslo Vikings versus AIK. Then got Stockholm Mean Machines versus Tiraso Royal Crowns. And last game of the weekend is K-Town Predators versus Limham Griffins. It's going to be a good one, man. It's going to be really good. I'm excited about all these games. And I really think it, it's a good setup to have – it's, it's kind of – what I would I would call it, I mean, this is probably just me just talking too much, but this is what, for especially for the last two games, this is what I would call rivalry weekend. Oh, going right. into the season, that's what we're thinking, right? We're thinking we're going to see number one and number two play, and then we're going to see the two teams with Division One who should be the top teams play each other, and then you know AIK and Oslo, yeah, they got to play. I mean, it is what yeah. it is. <laughs> Sometimes every year it always seems like whoever chose the schedule. Always did a good oh. job, you know what I mean? Yeah. They got lucky. And then for it to come down to this, where we had these questions before, where mm -hmm. who's going to get in, where the two and three seed doesn't matter, and it also is a rivalry week, you know what I mean? That's like the derby right there, another another type of derby. You, um, you basically have two derbies, right? You got like a, a yeah, sure. Stockholm derby, and then what is it, Skane? Is that what y'all call that area? Oh, yeah. Skona. Skona, whatever, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, Swedish, <laughs> Swedish. I, I ain't trying to be disrespectful to Swedish. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I respect the culture, but you know, yeah. swung me over here. But yeah, let's get into it here in a second. Okay, first game up: Oslo Vikings versus AIK. Antoine keys to victory for Oslo. What you got? And Let's keep keys to victory for playoff implications. How yeah. can they win and win by a lot? Like, what do they need to yeah. do? That's, that's exactly what I was going to say. So, go into this game. They've been playing great football. So, go in this game and go in there with the mindset that we have a mission. We have to go in here and we have to win convincingly because you can move up. You do have the potential to move up to that number four slot and get a home uh, in a home victory game. So, go in there and just stand on business, take care of business, do what you got to do, and win. Juice, what are you thinking? For Oslo. Oslo, they need to come up with the same fire they've been doing the past couple of weeks, you know, putting teams with their donut and get the ball to Snyder. Um, I'm having a brain fart of quarterback name. Can you say it for me right now? CJ Fowler. CJ Fowler. Yeah, yeah see, pretty boy CJ, you know, let him do his thing, running the ball if he could, because I know he could use legs, but he's not really using it. Uh, some team, you know, reached out to me. It was like, yo, is he that good? And I saw his tape. He was running the ball a lot when he was in, uh, uh, I think it was university or high school. I'm not really sure. It was some, anyways, he needs to use his legs. Do what they got to do to put as much points as possible. I don't think they need to use Will on offense. But if they have to, do what you got to do to score points. But I don't think they have to. I think they have enough threats with the German receiver they got, Schneider, uh, number nine. I'm having a brain follow his name because I haven't seen these guys playing so long, yeah. spread the ball defensively. I think that stop the screens. I mean, that's all Terry Self seems like they can really do. Yo, we'll, we'll go have a day. We'll go have like 20 tackles. I bet you Will has like 20 tackles, 20 tackles, and like five of them would be tackle for losses. Yeah. For me, I think he's a big player for all, so I think they're going to score points. Um, I don't – I don't think they'll have trouble scoring a lot of points, but again, for that whole like, if you want to take the, um, the number four seed, right? Four seed yeah, that four, yeah. you want to take, scoring thirty points, that's possible. They can do it. I'm not sure that they will, because I'm not sure how important it is for them to have a home game when it comes to if we end up getting an injury because we're trying to score too many points. Like if they don't score a whole bunch of points early. I think Derek Mann will shut that stuff down and be like, let's just get out of here because we mm -hmm. do have a playoff game no matter what. But if you know if they're able to 
what I would say keys to victory is dominant defense. That's something that I have not seen from Oslo, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, against the Griffins, they did get put up a zero, and that, that was pretty good. But I, I don't think that that's going to be the same situation when you play against AIK, and I need them to be dominant so they can get all those points. Not to the point that you just hold them to zero, to the point that it's three and out, three and out, three and out, three and out. That's what I mean. I don't want them to – they need to not have any, like, oh, we might be able to do this, like what Antoine said earlier on AIK. You don't want them moving the ball, taking up time, and yeah. then not score. You want them three and out, three and out, three and out, so that you have as many opportunities as possible to put up points. So I'm putting it on the defense because if the defense is three and out, three and out, three and out, eventually they're going to score points. And if it gets to that point where you score a lot of points, you get that other team in a, a, a excited state where they're like, oh, man, we got to throw the ball. And now they're going three and out, and it's only wasting 20 seconds of clock time. And now you have a lot more time to do what you want to on offense and to, you know, have a game plan, but also score a lot of points. If I was the Oslo Vikings, I'd put the number 50 up on the board. That's how many points we want. And then I put number zero next to it. That's how many points we're allowing. And if that's that's the goal. I mean, obviously you might not be able to get to it, but that should be the goal for this week for them is put up fifty. Don't let them do anything. Do you think? Do you think them putting up a big win? I think them putting up a big win sends more of a message to other Brew versus that that we just beat AIK. Yeah, we beat AIK. That's that, mm. I think that's take care of itself. But I do think if they beat AIK in a convincing fashion, especially after other Brew just beat them in somewhat non impressive manner like 21 to 7 it was like mm, it, it's good like congratulations but like i wasn't impressed really so if if Oslo goes out there and dominates aik i think that sends more of a message to other people like hey i better be working on some stuff in it uh, in your yeah, off week because we coming i think that sends more of a message to us and like the media because <laughs> we'll start <laughs> saying stuff like that like look how bad they beat them yeah, they're they're not bad. They beat them. <laughs> I think if anybody like real football players and coaches would know that, you know, you look at the game film and you look at your matchups, not how someone else plays against them. Sure. I, but it is still good for the culture to have something like that done. Like this, this would be a, a good statement, like you said, to say, hey, we're going into the playoffs on a run. That's another thing for us, though. Like they started 0 and 4. Yeah. They, they haven't beat any of those Swedish those top Swedish teams, they didn't beat Orbru. They lost in that game. Mm-hmm. And now they're going into the playoffs. They want to go into it, you know, 3-0 and in a dominant fashion. If they blank this team and win by 30, they've won their last two games by 60-plus points and haven't allowed anything in two weeks. Yeah, and, I think about, and, and I'm thinking about it like this, too. Like, it also sends a message to Orbru because not only did we win in a convincing fashion, but we took something away from you. Mm. Wow. So yeah. y'all, preparing, y'all preparing for a home a home playoff game. We took that away from you. Now you gotta come see us. So mm. now it's all like but Arab could also just put up a lot of points as well. Oh, they don't wait, Arab playing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. they don't play. They oh. could have, oh, but they yeah. didn't. Oh, yeah. They're, yeah they're all they can do is watch. All they can do is watch this weekend. Yeah, yeah. I guess so over there. Because it was it was gonna suck is for both teams no matter what. Well, not gonna be no matter what, because one team. Well, whoever has to travel, if you win the game, you got to travel again the next week. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, it's yeah. like if Oslo, they, they don't travel, say they lose, all right, they're done. They don't got to travel again. But yeah. I'd rather but have I the team travel than, than have another travel game. I think it gives you the it, – it's the ultimate power move. Like you sitting yeah. here. Y'all beat us early in the season, so now, now I got to get my get back. We just beat the team that y'all look so so against. We we dominated them. Now y'all got to come see us, and we t- we took that away from you. Now you got to come. You got to travel to come and, see us. And I don't. I can't speak on OBK, but Oslo they 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 got fandom when it's important like that. Like they play like some <laughs> international games and stuff. And like yeah. when you know when they want, be crazy you know, when, when it's on the line, they'll they show up out there. So that could be something they really want. But moving would, on to the oh yeah. what. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. We, we, uh, moving on to the other team, uh, AIK. Uh, how could they, you know, pull this off? Uh, Juice, any ideas? I mean, I'll keep it simple. I won't wrap up too much. I think that simply, you know, Mo, he's doing a good job drawing up things on the drum board. I think that offensively, that's where they will have to win the game. They got to be able to move the ball 
which we see that's not their strong point so far. They need to be able to run the ball and pass the ball smooth. There was one game where I think it was against Tiraso where they need to bring that Tiraso game mindset where they were moving the ball. They wasn't getting in second and long and, and third and long because when you get in those situations, you're not going to win the game. Defensively, uh, you know, Oslo is decent with the run, so I think they should focus on trying to stop the run when they can, but protecting themselves deep because Oslo has playmakers. So if they can fit, adjust their coverages and study the plays where they like to go deep, circle up Snyder, circle up number nine, um, the little swaggy, one of the swaggy guys to number 82, I think that's his number, circle them up and just stop them, you know what I mean? And I think you have some sort of success. What about you, Antoine? What, what can AIK do? They just have to figure out a way to uh, to finish drives and put points on the board. That's that's really the main thing. That's the only thing they have to do. They have to figure out a way to finish their drives. And I think they have to play more disciplined football, and they have to try to utilize uh, like penalties to kind of prolong their drives to get them a little bit closer to put them in better situations to be able to put points on the board. But that's their only mission put points on the board you have to put more than seven points on the board true true you have to yeah for for me i think aik is it's not that hard man you got to play four down football all game you got to play this game like it is the last game which it, it is. is if you lose there's nothing else that means when it's third down you don't have to get the first get enough that you got a reasonable fourth down I don't, and you can say, well, you know, we want to get field yard. What is it? Um, field position, blase, blase. It don't it matter. Up. If yeah. you don't score any points, it don't matter how good your field position is. And the only way that you can score points is to stay on offense until you get into the end zone. And if you're not in the end zone, you should be running a play. You should not be punting the ball. And yeah. if you do decide to go punt, it better be a fake punt. Like, it, it, why not? It don't make no sense to go out there and punt the ball because now you're just saying you don't want to win. I think for AIK to win this game, they have to play it like it's the last game. You can't play in the first quarter. If it's third and 20 on your own 20, run a screen, run a hitch, get five yards, and on fourth and 15, draw something up in the dirt. I don't care. But at least give it a chance that you can keep the ball on offense and score points. Everybody know the screen is coming. You think they're going to actually listen to me? Come on now. They ain't listening to me all season. If they listen to me, they'd have three wins right now instead of just one. <laughs> and AIK, they, uh, shout out to Will. They lost a big piece on their uh, offense and defensive line. And Will, he he went down uh, with a leg injury. I think he tore something in his knee. Really? Yeah. Hmm. yeah it, was, Will? It, was it was bad. You said Will tore something in his knee? He left the game. I talked to him yesterday. He's waiting for a surgery on his leg. That's oh, the Will, left tackle. Uh, number number seventy one. Uh, yeah, he, that's their left uh, tackle, right? Yeah. yeah. For for AIK. For AIK. Um, for AIK. For AIK. Not Will Sal. Not not the guy. Oh, 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 oh. A shout out to number seventy or seventy one for Earl Blue Black. Nice offensive lineman, bro. He was living. He was living on the football field, and he, he stayed in it. it. It did something in my heart watching him continue to fight, and he had that limp on the field. So basically, you know, pat that, go take that, go get that boy kebab. Now we got Stockholm Mean Machine versus Tirasol Royal Crowns. And then for these two, it's pretty simple. Just win. Like, it's, that's actually all you really got to go. So what's keys to victory for uh, Stockholm? Antoine, you can go first. Oh, you said for stock. Oh, for Stockholm. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, keys to victory. Um, I don't know. I'm curious to see how their new quarterback is going to play. Uh, I'm glad that we get to see him uh, right now uh, in this game, so he gets a game before the postseason. Um, so hopefully he can just step in there and, and do his thing. Um, I think. I yeah. I think that would be. I think that would be the main key is uh, getting their new quarterback comfortable and seeing how they scheme off him. Obviously, their run game. They have three running backs. They don't even need to use Casper. They have three running backs that can that can carry the ball very well, and I think uh, do a great job in that area. But yeah, man, just do just do what they've been doing. I mean, when it comes down to Stockholm and Tito, so I feel like it's like big brother versus little brother, and I think little brother's just trying to move out of big brother's uh, shadow a little bit. Hold on, hold on. Who's little brother? Who do you think little brother is? The team that's lost to the other team 
for the past every game for the past couple of years. They've beaten each other, right? For the past two years, no. No, Stockholm. Well, I mean, not last, well, last two years, I know Stockholm is undefeated in that. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, historically, historically, yeah, historically, yeah, historically, historically they've beaten historically, each other. Yeah. So you but can't just become big brother for a two year stint. No offense. Like football's yes, long can. sport. Yes, you can. That'll make you big brother. That makes it a rivalry. With who's who, who's the best team in the city? Who who would you say is the best team in Stockholm? Big not brother. Gonna speak on Stockholm like that. <laughs> big, big brother. You know. I'm just saying, like, I mean, if I, well, how about this? All you Tiraso fans, I mean, y'all heard what Antoine said. I mean, it's that's what he said. It's a fact. I don't know about fact. I, 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 I've seen a lot of bad rivalries, and I feel like this is one that at this least it goes this back is, and forth. Yeah, this is a good rivalry, but for the past two years, Stockholm has worn that Big Brother t-shirt, and they've been winning. Uh, and you don't get – you got to win, like – after two years, then you become two big brother. So I guess I, so, so, so I if they win again, so if they beat them again this year, then what? Then I, yeah, I guess then I guess I give it to them. Like three years <laughs> of not beating a team dictates, you know, big brother. Is he taking two a years, call in the middle? Yeah, but two two yeah. years is long enough, man. I think it's time. But I do think, yeah, I, it's just simple. The keys to victory right now is just Stockholm, just how how their new quarterback fits in especially with it being this late in the season and especially with it being, I don't want to put too much pressure on them, but it is kind of like a pressure situation where like, you know, we're actually playing for, uh, we got something to play for. We got to go out there and win this game because uh, we, if we win this game, then we do get a bye week uh, in the first week of the playoffs. So it is something to play for. So to see how he handles the pressure. Well, for me, because I believe that uh, it's actual rivalry and that, you know, either team could win this game. Yeah. I think Stockholm, to, to really win this game, they've got to play good defense. Uh, what I want to say, because I was I had something else prepared, what I want to say is just get the ball to Matthew Restloff because they ain't done that enough this year. If you do that, you're going to win the game. But I know that even if they do get him the ball, it won't change the fact that Tirso's offense is one of the most high-powered in the league. They have to stop him, and I think putting pressure on Jared Haywood won't work. I don't think he's pressurable. Is that a word? Pressurable? Well, maybe he's unpressurable. I, I, I'm just making up English words here. <laughs> Juice, you're muted. For Lord, this is the week to see. This is the week to see. Yeah, we'll find out. Um, I think whatever Stockholm does on defense will dictate how this game goes. If their defense holds up and forces Terrace to like you know, manufactured a drive, it's going to be tough. A lot of Terry Soul's offense is based on, you know, them putting their best players in positions to succeed and succeed. You know, their receivers usually win their matchups. They get to the to the open space. Quarterback can put the ball anywhere. So if there is any open space, they both find it, they score. Now, if the main machine can limit that and slow that down and keep them to, you know, you can't, get these big plays, you can't find the, the holes in our defense, it's going to be hard for Tirasol to move the ball. I don't think they're – they haven't shown that they're capable of that type of offense yet, of, you know, nickel and diamond all the way down the field. They usually need a big player or two to kind of get across that midway point and get into that red zone. So if Stockholm can make them play the offense, they got a good chance to come out with the pick. Juice, what are your thoughts? What do you think? Yes, I'm. I'm speaking for Stockholm. What they need to do? Yeah, yeah. Stockholm. Yeah. So Stockholm essentially needs to know that they are winning this game, in a sense of we've been winning this game all the time. Mm. The Big right brother. Game. <laughs> like we got the upper hand on them. They haven't proved to us anything else. Um, but my real question is though, even before I wanted to keep going in deep, I was just thinking more about. Before I go in deep discussion, I was just really thinking about how much does this game matter for both teams because you already know it's two or three. Well, well it's a buy. Two gets a buy, three doesn't. Yeah. So it does okay. matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. All right, yeah, that and, makes a lot more sense. And it matters because it, it, matter, it matters to both of these teams because Stockholm doesn't want is not going to want Tito to win, and Tito so wants to beat Stockholm because they haven't beat him in in two years. So yeah, it yeah, matters sure. on that. Yeah, yeah. So, and yeah, bragging right. Yeah, for sure. I mean, 
For real, for real, for real. When we say bragging rights, some people are like whatever. But for real, this game is really bragging rights. A lot of Thank bragging you. rights. So go ahead, go ahead and fight it off before the playoffs. So let me go back to Stockholm. Stockholm, they need to spread the ball. They got to figure out how to uh, utilize their run game to – I think the run game is pretty much going to be the main thing that's going to help them win the game. I think passing passing the ball against them, you know, Terrence just signed my boy Jeremiah Gutierrez. Shout out, shout out to him. You know, uh, he's going to be playing on defense uh, in in the box in the secondary wherever they put him. You know, that's where I know he plays. I think running the ball against Terrence seems like it's been the easiest option for most teams. Passing the ball has not been the strength. They got two cornerbacks that's locking down everybody. Now they just added my boy Jay. They're key. They're going to need to run the ball really well, then utilize the run to open up the pass, for sure. I guess we'll, we'll move on to Tiraso now and what they need to win. And I'm going to lead this one off. God damn it. Yes, I am. Uh, <laughs> Tiraso, similar to kind of what a uh, little bit of what, Ant- what Juice was saying about Stockholm meeting machines and what they need to do to be successful, I think that Tiraso needs to stop the run. 100%. They need to stop the run. If they force the man machine into a, we have to pass, we're going to throw up 100 passes, they're going to win enough to slow them down. They're going to win enough of them. I don't, <laughs> I'm not going to say that they're going to lock down Stockholm receivers because I still think they're some of the best in the league, but I do think that they'll win enough matchups that drives will stall if they, if they're, in situations where it's second and third and long instead of second and medium, third and medium where they normally have it because they have a really good running game. If you force, if you force Casper Whitberg to become more of a receiver or actually make him a blocker, you know, put enough pressure going in that they can't have their running back in the routes. And now you got five on four in the secondary. And if you're as good as you says, you got at least two DBs that can lock down two of those guys and now you got three on two, quarterback has to make the read, but you got a good D-line and pressure coming that he might not have time to make that read. So you're forcing them into a situation that you're more comfortable in. You said it before in this season, Terrasso hasn't really done well against the run, but they've been able to stop the pass. So you want to play to your strength and force this team to pass the ball. I'm not sure how they're going to do it. Honestly, I think you got – the best defensive line in the league, but the bums on that defensive line don't always show up. Yeah, I said it. Those those four guys that play defensive line for Tiraso are some of the best players I've seen in the league, yet I see plays that they take off or plays that they don't play sound defense and they allow other teams to kind of get a couple extra yards here and there. Not a ton, but enough to keep drives going. They got to cut that out this week. Um, like you guys say, it's a rivalry game. Don't take any plays off. Y'all got enough depth back there. There's some good backups in tier. So you can rotate. Head coach will get in there and play D-tackle sometimes. I know he got it in him still to run around. So don't take any plays off. Give it your all and take away the run game. If you take away the run game, y'all got nothing to worry about. If you allow Casper Wedberg to get going at any point in this game, it'll come down to the end, and I don't know who I trust. I don't know. Uh, (laughs) Juice, what about you? What were you? Uh, let's go for Tiraso. Um, Tiraso, this is going to be a challenge. I do think that I man, I'm excited to see if Double V is back this game. I did hear rumor that he should be back for this game, so I'm excited to see him. Uh, Double V, you know they got to keep doing what they normally do. They we know they're going to pass the ball, and for them, I think passing the ball helps them with their running, with their running game. Mm-hmm. Um, so my, my question is how they're going to match up defense defensively against Stockholm Mean Machines because we know that um, Stockholm has the high power receivers, but now we see that Stockholm has a new quarterback and we don't know how well this quarterback is going to do. So if I'm tier so, I think that a key to victory that you guys will need to utilize is Yata, you're going to have to step up. Malcolm, Golgi, you guys are going to have to put pressure on this quarterback because he's not used to playing football in Sweden. He only can watch film and just guess what he thinks that you guys are going to be utilizing. I, I was send some pressure at this guy and have my lockdown DBs do what they do. Um, don't get into the third and long situation like I mentioned for the other team, and I think that Tiraso can be uh, successful because I know that they really want to win this game and Stockholm really want to win this game. I think this might be the only game that I probably would, 
you know, truly watch since I'm off this weekend. What about you, Antoine? What can uh, Terrace do to get the dub? I'm just going to simply go off a combination of what you guys both said. So uh, their defensive line is definitely going to have to be, play a major part in stopping the run and getting pressure on uh, Stockholm's new quarterback. Um, yeah, that's, that's really it. It, it. it comes down to how well you can can do those things. And if you do those things, then I think you, it puts your – it takes the pressure off your offense and it kind of puts more pressure on Stockholm to figure out how to get something else going and utilize something else. Um, so it puts them more in scramble mode and it, it, it – it leads to, I think, uh, your offense, you know, going out there and just as long as they can continuously put points on the board and like just keep on taking away, take away, tripping away at it, I think they do have a good shot. But it all comes down to your defense and how well you can stop uh, the run and put pressure on the quarterback. I think we all agree that their defense is, you know, under the lights this weekend. So yeah, we'll move sure. on to the last game. K Town Predators versus Memham Griffins. This D1 shenanigans. That's what I'm going to call it. Uh, Juice, I'll let you go first. What can the Predators do to get a win in this one? This is the Battle of Scona, the South, man. D1 shenanigans. That's what I'm calling it. All right, so we're we're talking about Memham first? No, we're talking about uh, Predators first. Okay, Predators. If Jacob Stenberg is at quarterback, I, I, I like him at quarterback, you know. I mean, I think all those teams in the South, they got a lot of receivers playing backup court that are the backup quarterbacks. But simply, you know, I, I think that they're the better team and I think that they should feel a little bit confident, even though they may not have North Lead in the game. But offensively, drive the ball, spread the ball to all your playmakers, like how you guys really be normally been doing, and see if you guys can establish a run game. I think as well, and I'll just add this as well, if you guys get some QB runs, which may not be necessary. But if it comes down to it, you know, utilize that. I think this game is going to be really challenged because it's a rival and Lemham thinks that they the better team down there. Um, defensively, do your best. You know what I mean? Uh, they don't <laughs> have too many great playmakers, but keep the ball in front. Um, put a circle on two guys. Number six, number four, o- Olaf Nelson, whatever number he is. Four, four, yeah, four. Fida, Numa Fida. Fida. You know how they say the skulls here. Put a circle on that guy. And – you know they are UBI's be all right defensively. I'm gonna go next because you said everything I was gonna say. I was just gonna say uh spread the ball on offense for the predators, add in some QB runs so that a run game is a little more varied, and you'll be fine. Like you you should be okay. Like they did a really good job with him at quarterback. He actually spreads the ball more than when they had their American quarterback which means sure. it's harder to, you know, game plan where he's going with the ball. And then mm-hmm. given that running element of him at quarterback and having a couple designed run plays to kind of add to the run game, that just makes them a tough offense to go against in this matchup against the Griffins. I don't think the Griffins defense is that versatile to really stop him if they utilize him correctly. So I think if they do that, they have a really good chance to win. What about you, Antoine? What do you got for the Predators? To, yeah, to- I'm, I'm yeah. I'm not going to be the one to go against the grain. Yeah, I agree with everything that you guys both said. I mean, uh, both of these teams are kind of, you know, they're without their starting quarterbacks due to injury. But fortunately enough for the Predators that they have the better of the two backup quarterbacks in Jacob Sinberg. Yeah, so just utilize him. Um, yeah, honestly, this is this is similar to the Stockholm um, rivalry where the Predators have been kind of little brother to the Griffins for the past couple of years. So Go in there. This is, I think, this is your best opportunity uh, this year to beat them because you, you are slightly better. So go out there and just prove it. And there is something like this is this is all this is essentially a toilet bowl. But luckily enough for this toilet bowl, like you do have a chance to get a prize and making it to the playoffs. So toilet bowl. That's a better name for this game. Toilet bowl. That's what it is. Who is gonna be the worst? Because whoever loses becomes the worst. That's what you're really playing for. To not be Who's the worst. Rushed? <laughs> Who's yeah. getting flushed? Yeah. Uh, so I guess moving on to the Griffins, I- I'll leave this one off about the Griffins. Best way for them to win this game, I'm going to go, you know, juice like hope, pray, you know, uh, clear your aura and assume that the other team, maybe 
they don't have all their players. I don't have a lot of faith in the Griffins winning this game. Everybody's showing up for this game. Yeah. They ain't showing I, up for this. I'm not sure there's a lot they can do because I think defensively they'll be fine. They can hold the other team to, you know, 18 points. But offensively, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to put up the points. I would say, honestly, I would say throw the kitchen sink at them. But I've said that like three times and they stopped doing it. They only did it against War Group. That's good. After they, that, they yeah, basically that. shrunk it into a shell of themselves. So I'm not going to give you advice that you're not going to listen to. So just go to the mosque, go to the um, church, whatever your religion is, go turn on the TV if that's your type of religion, and you know, put up some prayers, um, clap your hands three times, click your heels, throw some pennies in the well, whatever works for you, and see what happens. Uh, Antoine, what is your advice for the Griffins? Yeah, I'm going to go send it out to what you just said. I think they need to go on a, a little expedition. They need to find some of that glacier water that Bobby Boucher was drinking, maybe get some of that. Um, or, I don't know, pull a Space Jam and mix in some weird powders and call it Mike's secret stuff. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's really all you got. I mean, outside of the other brew game, I haven't seen anything inspiring from them. So it's just like I can expect – the same in this game. It's not like they're just going to show up because it's a rivalry and because they've been beaten on the Predators. No, the Predators are better than you this year. So it's just like, it just is what it is. I think they just chalked it up. And I think they, I mean, once their quarterback went down, I think they kind of just was like, all right. Yeah. We had a good showing in, in one game. We had our moment and our moments passed. So now it's the season's over. We'll try again next year. Juice, any, any words of encouragement for the Griffins? Two things. One thing, have some pride, survival game. Two, Utilize your trick plays. Y'all got it. <laughs> All right. And we on. Drip, grind, and stand out. That's the Improved Athletes way. Improved Athletes, a European sports brand based in Milano. If you want to look good and be successful in athletics, go and head over to improveathletes.com to stand out with your new drip. All right, fourth quarter weekend picks brought to you by Improved Athletes, where you can grind, drip, and stand out. Our picks will be available on Instagram at Pro Football Sweden, where you can make your comments. No need to flood us in the DMs. First game, let's get your pick and your explanation. Oslo Vikings versus AIK. Juice, you can go first on this one. Oslo Vikings are the better team. I'm not saying anything else here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for keeping things short, and it's not yeah. super cute. And, and, and Oslo, you know, Oslo players, you know, they literally come a little bit more swag. Even though I call uniforms, they, they nice too. But Oslo, for just that reason, a better team. What about you, Antoine? I'm not saying anything different. Oslo Vikings, they're just simply better. That's it. And I concur. <laughs> All right, next to the second game, Stockholm Leaf Machines versus Tiraso Royal Crown. Stockholm is the home team, just in case anybody forgot. They're both the home team. They're the same. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Antoine, go ahead. Pick and why. I'm picking little brother. I know I've been giving it to big brother and saying Stockholm is the better team, but I think I'm going to give it to little brother. I think little brother is a little bit tired of getting beat on. So I think they go out there and win. Tiraso. Also, reminded, I don't think Josh Hissy is playing in this game. Uh, okay, uh, not, I, I'm back to Big Brother then. No, nah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm still. I'm still sticking with my pick. I mean, they still got Kevin. They still got Eddie. If Eddie goes out there, so they still got. They still got things to, to get the job done. It would have helped to have Josh. Don't get me wrong. It would definitely would have helped. But no. Another I, thing to mention as well is that Stockholm has that Omar, the the American version of Omar, at DB. <laughs> I think his name is is, and, and is I think, Kamar. I think his on. name is Kamar. Like his name is like K E Mar. So it's yeah, man. Just, oh, dang it. Yeah, you. All right, dang it, you convinced me. All right, I'm I'm switching my pick. My bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> but then I just I had to I had to my math wasn't math and now it, it added up now. Yeah, I'm picking Stockholm to win. They added some pieces, so because it because it came more and yeah, and Eric Green. Okay. It makes it makes it yeah, oh yeah, I'm oh yeah, Stockholm. Sorry, sorry, Tito. So I was with you for a second. Then I my my, my my bad, my bad doing some hey, hey. do what you gotta do. Uh juice, what about you? Who's your pick and why? Hey, this one, this one I, I really do not know. I'll be completely honest. But since I have to do someone, the way that I would like for it to go, I would like for Stockholm to win this one, but Tiraso to go to the finals. 
you know. But I'm gonna go with Tirso on this one. I'm gonna go with Tirso. How are you gonna convince me to switch my pick and then you're gonna pick the opposite? Yeah, team? I know. Diabolical. <laughs> Diabolical. <laughs> like, I just got. I just gotta go. With, you know, because the reason. All right, my reason is because they got uh, Stockholm has a new quarterback in here. They don't really know what's going on. Hopefully, Matt is playing this game. Don't know if Matt's playing the game, but maybe he's a little injured. He need to rest a little bit. But Tudor Show really wants this. They want to know that they are the truth. They need a break. Stockholm actually needs to play another game so they they could back get some rhythm. Yeah. And <laughs> they need to lose uh, so they can have a yeah. playoff game. Yeah, they actually need, bro. Get a so get I'm, a warm up against the number the number six seed. Yeah. Take this L so you can get that warm up. Yeah. Make them travel from all the way from the south just to come take an L. That's a long trip just for an yeah. L. It's a long trip. They might as well just say, you know what, guys. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for thanks for allowing us to be in the playoffs, but you know we won't bow out gracefully. That ain't got yeah. nothing to do with this game. <laughs> All right, you're right. I'm going with the royal crowns, man. I'm going with the royal crowns. All right. So for me, I would go with uh, the meme machine, uh, Big Brother, as Antoine was calling them, and I'm I'm leaning a different reason for why. Because I think, and uh, this is gonna come out bad, but I'm gonna say it anyways. The Royal Crowns cannot stop Casper Wedberg. That's it. I think that that's pretty much the reason they win this game. I think Stockholm will keep the game close. And in the end, Casper will have enough plays. He'll get in the end zone enough. Even if he doesn't get in the end zone enough, he'll set them up well enough that they're able to control the game. Because that's really what Stockholm wants to do, especially with the new quarterback. You want to get, get the game into a situation where you can be in control and you can kind of dictate how it's going to end. And I think as long as Casper's able to, you know, get his runs and be effective in both the run and the pass game, they'll end up with the win. So that's why I'm definitely going with them. I was just going to say that I'm just really curious to see what the, the DB lineup is going to do because I think Ole, I kept talking trash about Stockholm and DBs, and I just feel like that's the place where they need to be attacked. Mm. So I'm to see how they got the American guy. They're probably going to go with the big black guy from the South. Uh, I think he's number 22. Yeah, so that's gonna make them a lot stronger because I believe their safeties was not the problem. It was just their cornerbacks and teams were not taking advantage of that. So I'm curious to see how well Stockholm Tirso's receivers are gonna do in this game and see if Tirso can establish a run game with uh double V. And the last game, we got K-Town Predators versus Limham Griffins. I'll throw my pick out first because I don't have any dog in this fight, because I mean I, I wish none of these lower teams were in the playoffs. Uh, so I'm going to go with the Predators because apparently they're the better team. I mean, they're the, the better out of the two teams that I don't think are very good in general, but that's why I'm going to go with the Predators because they'll, they'll probably be better in this game. Antoine, who you got and why? Yeah, I'm going to go with the Predators as well. I mean, I, I do think they're just slightly better. I mean, they, they have – yeah, that's just really it. They're just slightly better. Like I said earlier, similar to the Stockholm uh, rivalry, this is another rivalry game, and Predators have been on the losing end of that rivalry for a long time. So now I think it's time for – I mean, this is their best chance to get a get-back win and then get into the playoffs. Juice, anything to add? I'm going a, I'm to a just openly be a hater. I'm just going to go with Limhan Griffin for two reasons. Because you guys are going against them. Even though I do think the Predators are going to win a game. And – I'm just, I just want to see an upset. <laughs> Very so, good reasons for your picks. I'm a hater. Hey there, sports fans. Are you interested in exciting sports of American football, flag football, or field hockey? Well, look no further because Sweet 3, the sweetest association for these sports, has got you covered. Sweet 3 is not just about games. They're about building a community, players of all ages and backgrounds coming together, supporting each other, and having an absolute blast on the field. Sweet 3 is proud to be an advocate for the Swedish sports movement, where integrity and sportsmanship reign supreme. So whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, come join Sweet 3 and experience the magic of sports like never before. Visit the Sweet 3 website and get in on the action today. Sweet 3, where passion meets purpose. That's it for this episode of Pro Football in Sweden. Anything we miss that needs to be discussed, guys? Anything y'all want to throw out there? All Gucci. All Gucci. All Gucci. You sure? I feel like you want yeah. to say something, Alpha. Nah, I'm about to say something else. I'm just doing something that 
I don't even believe, you know? It's like, man, that's <laughs> no life person. You're going against what you don't even believe. I think the Predators are a better team for this matchup, but you want to go with them, man. I, I feel like something's going to come out of them. Look, I, look, we'll give you a chance. If you want to change your pick, you can change nah, your pick. Man. I'm not you, don't have to, pick. you don't have to be a hater just to be a hater. Like, if it ain't in you, don't do it, man. We're not trying to make you a hater. I know. It, it, is, it is tickling my bones the wrong way because I don't yeah. got a hater bone inside of me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you if you don't want to pick them, you don't have to. Like nobody I mean, forces you. Just don't do it just for the just for the I'm going, I'm going with the Division One champions, Lemon and Griffins. You sure about that? Is that your final answer? <laughs> yeah. And if they lose, we call them Malmo all next year. And I call them <laughs> we call them Malmo. Malmo. That's funny. Uh, but nothing else to add. Then uh, Juice, let them know what you're thinking about them when you're watching the film. Your film is your resume. Whatever you put on film, we're going to evaluate. If you put garbage on film, we're going to tell you about your garbage. If you put something spicy and juicy on film, oof, swaggy on film, oof, we're going to let you know. So put the right things on film. Let me ask you this before we get out of here. I don't know we we're over time anyways, but has anybody done anything like swaggy or spicy this year? Like... Can you? Is, I mean, yeah, I mean, Josh Hicks. Josh, been some Josh, Josh Hicks has been nasty. I, I give you that, but I bet like you know, drip wise, oh, like man. yeah. Oh, but drip. drip wise. Players, they got they got drip um, celebrations. We, I mean, I've only seen the ugly gritty. I ain't seen nothing nice yet. Oh yeah, that ugly gritty. You know, that's right for you. Yeah, Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I was just thinking, like, man, sure would be nice if somebody, you know. Yeah. Well, like, comment down below if 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 we've been missing some of the drips or the or the, yeah. the cool celebration. I mean, maybe y'all should like send us some uh some dope photos into the the, the Instagram Pro Football Sweden. Send us some photos of y'all dripped out before or after the game or during the game. There's people out there taking photos and stuff. Um, I mean. I think Oslo, you know, still winning the social media game, but that ain't the same. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they're, they're doing it as a team, but like, you know, the photo drips and stuff, like, you know, see something. I, I do, because what I really would like to see is some of these AIK get guys do like a photo shoot, because them jerseys, A1. Oh. But I like oh. TSO's jerseys too. I love oh. I love the simplicity, but you know, the, and the 135, you know, oh. You know, the similar, you know what's the similarity that they have in these jerseys? They were designed by Rare. Ooh. Contact Rare. Sign hey, on. hey, hey, that was a seamless plug. Seamless <laughs> right there. Seamless <laughs> plug, you know? Get your drip right, hit Rare up. Oh, boy, yeah, nice. Stuck Stuck on what, 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 company, what company are the Wasser Royals with, Alpha? Rare. Oh, oh okay, okay, all right. Just, man, it's crazy. Just, yeah, it's nasty, you know. <laughs> I mean, just, just throwing that out there, guys. But uh, that's it for the episode. Good luck to all the teams this weekend. We'll be back next week with more insights and opinions. Uh, we'll be playoff talk next week, so that'll be great. Uh, please like, follow, and subscribe on all social channels at Pro Football Sweden, and we will see you guys next week. Hey, Peace out.